since like Tuesday. Oh. You know, <laughs> life happens. Oh, yes, it does. <laughs> You gotta be front center, Mr. Harris. Yeah. I know. <laughs> How many is it for a quorum? See, I don't know if Daryl's coming tonight. And like I say, I haven't found out anything about new members that were appointed. Guys, excuse my slow motion. That's all right. <laughs> Six o'clock. Well, We'll stand and do our perfunctory Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Roll call. Jonathan, are you doing roll call? I certainly can. Chairperson Harris. Present. Valerie Cruz. Uh, Blake Harris. Here. Daryl Murphy. Taylor Stutfin. Present. Alexandria Esposito. Present. Alicia Cade. Daniel Williams. Here. <clears throat> well, I guess that uh, fairly makes us eligible for today. <laughs> um, first of all, we'd like to get into an agenda update from Jonathan as far as what we've been talking, we talked about a little bit on the phone and some things he wants to bring up. Jonathan, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairperson and uh, members of the commission. It's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Jonathan Holliday. I started in January as the city's community development director. I'm really thrilled to be here. Um, I'd like to give you a few updates on some things we're working on uh, here at the city. I appreciate you letting me fill in as the staff person this evening. As you know, we're in a transition with our uh, city clerk. And uh, I'm also really excited to uh, announce to you that uh, Marcus Harris has been selected to fill the role of the city's first diversity and economic empowerment manager. This is a new position that has been uh, created in the city manager's office uh, to assist the city uh, residents uh, in terms of uh, understanding opportunities for employment in our area, as well as working uh, within our city to make sure that we're creating an inclusive environment for all of our employees. Uh, I expect uh, Mr. Harris to work closely with this commission in his new role going forward. He starts in his position on Monday. Uh, we're really excited to have him, and I know he'll be uh, reaching out to members of this commission and, and working with you going forward. So I um, appreciate being able to give you that update and, and being here today. I, I hope to be back and to see you more in the future, but I know that you'll enjoy working with uh, Mr. Harris. He's gonna be a great addition to the city, and, and I know I'm really excited that he's uh, coming on board starting on Monday. Um, I wanna make mention of the fact, in case somebody thinks it's a surprise, one of my nephews was formerly the city law director, Justin. Uh, Marcus, and what is his title? Uh, he will be the Diversity and Economic Empowerment Manager. Okay. He also is my nephew. Just so anybody knows anything, they will understand that there's a little bit of connection between us. If I say something to him and it sees I'm toward to the group, it's, uh, it's nothing. It's just I've known him since day one. Yeah. 
So uh, I just wanted to get that out in the air so we all know. And and uh, Blake is not my nephew. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I, I would just like to add that we might want to be careful with uh, – Appointing and hiring Harris's because this might start 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 beginning. They might start to wonder what's going on. Well, you know, it's funny you say that because uh, somebody had mentioned to me the other day says, "Man, you Harris's are starting to under wraps take over the city." I said, "No, that's not quite how it is." But uh, if you look back in time, Ada Harris, who's my mom, was very political in the city of Sandusky, so uh, she was a uh, she was the uh, director of the Committee on Aging in Sandusky while she was alive. And, and uh, yes, the family is kind of political, but I kind of like to stay in the background. I don't like to be vocal about mine. I'd rather do things behind the scenes. You get more done and you don't have as many headaches as you do outside. So I just wanted to get that out there. So if anybody says, hey, is he related to them? Well, yes, he is my nephew. And uh, sometimes you have to say, let's go to the woodshed. <laughs> but yeah he's a good guy and uh, I think he'll be beneficial for the city um, and one of the things that we were talking about earlier bringing up is the duration of time between us touching base and uh, and finding out what's going on in the updates in the city uh, I missed the last city commission meeting uh, but I used to get updates from Kelly Cresser and McKenzie, as far as what was going on, I don't get those anymore, and I don't know if anybody, Blake, you're on the commission, but I don't know if anybody else receives emails or updates as far as some of the things that are happening in the city. Uh, I'd like to know how everybody feels about it. I'm not saying having a formal meeting, but at least touching base by email or even a periodic Zoom call so that we can just 15 minutes touch base, see if anybody has anything going on, and... Uh, so that we, we have our finger on the pulse of, of what's happening in the city. Because if we're representing the city and things are going on and, and somebody calls us about something, we know nothing about it, that really kind of ties our hands and makes us ineffective as a body. And uh, I think that uh, that's something that Naomi, I don't, Ms. Twine, uh, I don't know if that would be something that would be conducive to your schedule, as busy as it is, but at least maybe once monthly or something where we touch base on a Zoom call or via chain of emails to let somebody know what's going on and what's pertinent in, in the community. Um, Mr. Chairman, um, I, I think that's a great idea, um, but we do have to be careful about having Zoom calls or meetings because they will constitute mm -hmm. a public meeting and those, those have to be um, according to the Ohio Sunshine Laws. Um, if we're going to be having a meeting, whether it is a Zoom call that we're going to get together, that has to be publicized. Um, I think it's a great idea. Um, I can send out emails or I can give you a call. Um, or Blake, since he is the liaison um, to uh, Community Relations <coughs> Commission. I think that will be um, something also that Marcus will be, um, as one of his roles when he comes on board. Um, he, uh, as Jonathan said, he'll be working closely with the CRC. Um, to you know, make sure that every, everybody's in lockstep, everybody knows what's going on, and things that can be um, pushed through this committee um, can be publicized and, 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 and uh, distributed and, and publicized in the public. But yeah, I don't mind yeah, um, giving you a call or you know, shooting you an email. Um, and just as you mentioned, um, Kelly, when she was a uh, permanent commission clerk, and then um, Mackenzie, um, when she filled the role after Kelly retired, um, um, I know they kept um, all the commissions in, in touch and in tune as to what was going on. Um, Kelly has come back on an interim basis, temporary basis. Um, we had, are in the process of interviewing um, commission clerks to backfill McKenzie's vacancy. Um, so that, that will also help once we get somebody on board. But no, I, I don't mind at all. Yeah, give you a call or you know, okay. shoot you an email. Okay, and I talked to Matt Westerhold at the register. He said he'd be more than happy to uh, community service announcement to let us, you know, put it in the register of what, what's planning to happen and, and things like that as far as meetings are concerned as, as well. Okay. So that would, that would serve to uh, 
also uh, be within the framework uh, of the law and say that we are publicly announcing that we're having a meeting mm -hmm. of, a, of a community commission. So that would also help as well. But yeah, I'd be, I don't know how anybody else feels, but I'd be more than happy to meet at least once a month in some way, shape, or form so that we can kind of keep, keep in touch with each other and find out what's going on, especially with this new position of diversity, uh, because there are going to be some things happening in the community that uh, I know we're going to get some calls about. As a matter of fact, there's something I wanted to bring up tonight uh, that we'll, uh, we need to be in lockstep in discussing because we don't want to send mixed signals out to the community of what's going on and who's handling what and who's doing what and actually what powers and authority we have to help resolve those issues. Uh, I would much rather be an open commission than to be something that we seem subversive. Um, uh, so that's, uh, that's something that I really would look, look forward to doing. Um, also, well, that will be under new business, but you have anything else, John? Uh, yes, a few more updates. Uh, we're working hard in community development right now to uh, gain uh, input from our, our residents. A great opportunity for that are the ice cream socials that you may have heard of. These are happening every Wednesday night in a different neighborhood throughout Sandusky throughout the entire month of September and the first, uh, first week of October. This is a great opportunity for residents to come out and meet their neighbors, uh, meet city staff and uh, city officials, uh, and also learn about projects in their neighborhood that have happened recently and to tell us uh, what they would like to see in their neighborhood. Uh, tonight, we're gonna be down at Churchwell Park uh, starting at seven o'clock. Last week, we were at Talon Floral Park, uh, and then we're gonna be uh, at other locations throughout the rest of, of September. So um, if, you're, if you're able to, please try to join us for one of the ice cream socials uh, that's happening throughout the city uh, over the next couple weeks. Do you have an extra copy of that calendar? Um, I can leave this copy here, and then uh, we can make extra copies if anyone would like them, and there's also information on the website. Okay, thank you. Um, and excuse me, what time is that? Uh, the meetings, the Wednesday evening meetings start at 7 o'clock, and then they're actually followed by a Thursday morning meeting at the same location um, at 10 o'clock the next day okay. for those that can't make so an evening meeting. you're going to have tonight at Churchwell Park and then tomorrow morning at Churchwell Park? Yes. Okay, well, 10 o'clock is bad for me because I volunteer at Goodwill on Thursdays and Fridays. Yeah, and... Uh, and Mr. Chair, I'd, I'd just like to add too. Heck, we had a we had a pretty good um, turnout uh, at the first uh, meeting. I would say, what fifty ish? Six? Maybe, wouldn't you say, Ronte? Probably. I mean, it was a decent decent crowd. So, um, hopefully that that continues. And now that my schedule has opened up, I think I'll shoot over there afterwards too. So. And there's free ice cream. Free. Yeah, I didn't partake in that. I it really is an ice cream social. I wanted to let the kids get in here first. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're also going to be meeting with the Cold Creek Crossing residents. Uh, that meeting will take place on September 21st from 5.30 to 7 p.m. at the Sandusky Career Center on Venice Heights Boulevard. As uh, some of you may be aware, we're actively selling a number of land bank properties in the Cold Creek neighborhood uh, and also want to talk with the residents about some of the larger uh, properties that are located there and get their uh, feedback and answer any questions that they may have. So uh, that'll be a Cold Creek Crossing resident community meeting, again, September 21st from 5.30 to 7 o'clock p.m. at the Sandusky Career Center. Um, lastly, we have two meetings that are coming up to discuss uh, transient occupancy. As some of you may be aware, transient rentals are uh, allowable in certain zoning districts within the city as well as in an overlay area. And the city does have the ability to create additional overlay areas. Um, if there's an interest in allowing more transient rentals, these are uh, typically Airbnbs um, that, that are used uh, at, at residential properties. So we're gonna be meeting on Monday, September 20th at 6.30 
at the uh, fire station there on Market Street, and again on uh, Monday, October 4th at 6.30, again at the fire station. So uh, anyone's welcome to come out. We are uh, specifically inviting residents from two specific neighborhoods for each of those meetings, but these are open to the public, and we invite anyone that has any questions or thoughts about transient occupancy in the city to come on out. Uh, we're also gonna be launching an online survey, so. Now, is this, is this going to be something that's, uh the transient uh, residences, is that going to be something that's citywide or neighborhood? Uh, is it going to be related to neighborhood approval? It could be citywide, but it's more likely, and, and what's being proposed by a number of residents is for the creation of new overlay districts. So the overlay districts are um, areas that are specifically identified that uh, would allow for transient rentals. Um, so. Currently, I believe the only overlay district for transient rental is the Cove District, and that's been in place for a number of years, so we're, we're looking at that to see uh, the impacts that that's had. Uh, and as I mentioned, there's, there are some residents that are proposing new overlay districts in their, in their neighborhoods, uh, but we really want to get feedback from the residents, uh, particularly in those areas, uh, before there's any recommendation or action taken by the Planning Commission, and then ultimately City Commission would have to approve any new overlay. Okay. Okay. Uh, lastly, uh, I'll just mention that we are in the Community Development Department currently uh, hiring a transit administrator. So uh, that's a really crucial role for the city that recently became available. Information's on our website. so. Um, if you uh, know of anyone that may be interested and qualified, feel free to uh, spread the word. It's funny you say that. Is uh, I spent 30 years in logistics and transportation, and those jobs never popped up 10, 15 years ago when I was looking for work back home. I had to go to Cleveland or Toledo to find work, and situations like this never came up. In, the, in those times, and you know, I figured this like, hey, I'm a little bit long in the tooth to be applying for something like that. But uh, yeah, that's an interesting, and I'll have to go on the website and take a look at it because I think I do know a few people that are in the logistics and transportation business that might be interested in yeah. in a locale like Sandusky. Great, we'd love to hear from them. Uh, and then lastly, as I think you're aware, our department administers the Economic Development Fund, which provides grants to businesses and, and commercial property owners that are making improvements and expanding. And we continue to collect applications. I'm hopeful that we'll have a, another allocation of funding uh, this fall that allows us to assist more businesses. But certainly if uh, any members of the commission are ever talking with any business owners, uh, that have any interest or, or needs or questions, they're welcome to call our department. We'd love to talk with them about the Economic Development Fund. Did you, uh, by any chance, uh, have any contact with uh, Mr. Pete Hunter about, uh, he's reopened the dairy frost on Cleveland Road, and I know he was looking at some assistance and and I tried to put him in touch with you guys. I don't know if he ever contacted you or not. He did, and um, I really appreciate you making that connection for us. I've I met with Pete, been out to his his uh, business, the Dairy Frost. It's great to see it open, and we're, we're definitely working with him, and I, I do hope to be able to help him continue to make improvements at that location. It's, it's really great to see that back open. Okay. Yeah, thank you. And that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Well, thank you, Jonathan. I appreciate that. Anybody have any comments or, or anything they'd like to interject? Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. I uh, just wanted to make everyone aware, uh, Devin Johnson, uh, founder of um, Proud Fathers Foundation, he's actually hosting an event uh, September 18th at 4 p.m. at Lions Park. It's called a Family Fun Day. Uh, just basically an opportunity uh, for... Um, you know, the fathers and, the, and their children to play and engage. They're gonna have cornhole, uh, kid kickball, uh, several park activities, and then they actually have a portion uh, that's called the grill with granddad. So they're gonna be able to grill burgers and hot dogs with, with, their, with their grandparents. And, uh, and yeah, and of course, weather, uh, weather permitting, we also have the uh, splash pad out there. So and what that's gonna be going start? on. Uh, 4 p.m. And that is September 18th, so next Saturday, yeah. Let me, let me see if I can. And it's uh, it's called what? Uh, Family Fun Day. Uh, uh, 
4 p.m. You got it. At Lions Park. Excuse me, I got a new phone, and you know, sometimes. <laughs> Unless you're tech savvy or three years old, you don't know how to do them anymore. And that's at Lions Park? Mm hmm. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Well, moving right along because I want to get this over with quick. I've got to ice my knee and stuff. New business. Um, one thing that I did have was, uh, I don't know if anybody's familiar with Mr. Danny Johnson. Well, his parents live on Farwell Street in Sandusky, and he's been writing me a series of emails regarding... Uh, the curb situation at his parents' home. And uh, I tried to explain to him that the damage to the, uh, the apron on his driveway, you know, there's weather, wear and tear, of them driving up and down. Well, they seem to think that it was caused by the city snowplows. And uh, I put him in touch with a couple people in the city, the road department and, and things like that. Uh, and they tried to explain to him that those aprons and things are really the responsibility of the homeowner uh, to repair, you know, unless they can prove that uh, the city was responsible for the damage. Now, he says snow plows, but he has no pictures before or after anything happened. Um, he's had uh, no contact with any of the snow plow drivers when something has happened. And I tried to explain to him that you have to go to the city's uh, street and highway department and figure out what's going on. And if there is damage, uh, I'm sure the city would be willing to work with them for the repairs. But uh, I've had a chain of like 10 emails from him. And it's, uh, it's uh, to the point where I don't think, I think that was one of the things that brought my attention that we don't meet enough to discuss these things. Um, I think we've resolved it to the point that he understands that the expense to repair that apron is his parents. Uh, they have several options of being concrete, uh, but it has to meet city code. And also, the only way he could do it is to go through the city and get a licensed uh, contractor who's licensed with the city to do repair work to the curbs and streets uh, to do that. I think it fell by the wayside when he found out that the city wasn't going to pay 100% to get that apron repaired. So I haven't heard anything from him since then. And I don't know if anybody else has heard from him or he touched base. Naomi, has he said anything to the commission? He said he was going to appear at a commission meeting about it. That's why I wanted, I, I, was, I couldn't make the last meeting and I wondered if he was going to be there. But uh, since I obviously haven't heard anything, I would assume that that uh, he's kind of backed off his, his demands. Um, but that's some of the things that I'd like to be able to say, okay, here's a resident that's come to me. Does anybody have any input on what we can or cannot do to help them resolve it or point them in, in the right direction to the, to the proper department to fix it? I think I did, uh, but uh, I drove by the other day and he's still got little cracks and crumblings on the apron, but once again, I, I stopped and talked to him just out of my car, and I told him, I said, you know, Danny, this is, I had this problem myself, and I had to pay for it in my driveway, so, you know, I'm just letting him know that if he starts, comes to one of somebody else about the same issue that I have addressed it with him and the city, and uh, the, the bottom line is, is that uh, the city says it's his responsibility. And, uh, you know, if I look through the city charter, and the city laws, it is the resident's responsibility. It's not the city's responsibility to fix your driveway apron unless it was damage caused, actually caused by the city and can be documented. Mr. Yeah, Mr. Okay. Chairperson, uh, just speaking to your point of if we could have more frequent meetings, um, that would be, I think that would be a situation where if you were having an issue and you wanted him to come before this commission, shoot us an email because we probably could have met sooner. You know, to at least talk to him about that, and then maybe we could point. You know, if something similar comes up, <clears throat> because there's no sense in waiting three months just for the sake of waiting three months. 
Right. You know, um, if something comes up, let's have a meeting. You know? Well, that's what I'm saying. Is Are people open to something like that, like a spontaneous, you know, call to order? Mm-hmm. Because we've got a problem. I would be. I think maybe a middle ground would be when Marcus starts his new position, if we reach out to him, because it sounds like he might be a liaison with the city. Maybe like once a month, you know, the first weekday of the month he could send us like a short memo providing, you know, volunteer opportunities, events that are going on in the city, new positions that have opened, things that Mackenzie was kind of shooting off as they came up, but just like, you know, maybe five line items that we as the CRC want to know about. Right. And then that would give us an opportunity to reply, hey, here's an issue that, you know, warrants a meeting and then we can decide from there. Are we available or right. are we not? Yes, I agree, I agree. You also want to be careful about, yeah, I think you just defined it appropriately is that, you know, get the information out there. Yes, Marcus would be a good um, point of contact for a lot of those, these diverse issues that come up that you really don't know who to talk to about or where to direct people. Um, but you want to be careful about, you know, just calling meetings here and there for one or two items because it does take a lot, you know, for, for staff to, to get together. Um, put the meeting together and everything. So now, don't get me wrong. I'm not a, <clears throat> I'm not a, a meeting person. Okay. Uh, okay. Believe me, I got a lot of other things going on. Yeah. Uh, but what I was saying was, is there a possibility that we could, like Tyler said, shoot a a group email that says this is what I have going on. Somebody else can respond. Hey, I I had that same situation, you know. And if enough people are interested in the situation. We say, you know, we need to get together and talk a little bit more about this to see what's happening. Nothing to say, just call a meeting, okay. but saying that if enough people on the commission agree that this is a uh, not a major priority thing, but something that we do need to deal with, we can get together and agree that, yeah, we do need to meet with this person or that person. And those are the situations that uh, that I think would warrant <laughs> Maybe even those situations may interject uh, a conference call so that we could all, because my family has a prayer conference call every Saturday. I know there's free conference call numbers. We could get together with a conference call and discuss those issues on a conference call with somebody. You you still got to be careful about even conference calls. It's a public meeting. I understand that. I understand that. I understand that. But what I'm saying is, if it's an open conference call meeting, you can allow people to get this number. And like I said, Matt Westerhold, public announcement, to be willing to put things like this in the register so that people have access to the number and the time and the date so that the public is aware of, of the meeting. They can dial in if they want, you know, but understand that we will not be having just the total chaos of commentary. It, it, there's still there's still a process to go through, and, and I think and I think Marcus will will be able to assist. And that's he, why you get the big bucks. I'm sorry. That's why you get the big bucks to walk us through the process. <laughs> <laughs> so I would I would steer away from calling conference calls or calling meetings. Mm-hmm. Now, if there's an emergency and there is something that you guys do need to address. Um, I, I forget the time frame. I think it has to be 24 hours notice, public notice of a meeting. But it's gonna, and, and technically, conference calls aren't um, public meetings. Um, they, uh, the governor did, uh, the, legis- the state legislature did designate that when we were going through COVID and the shutdown. But my point is, is that if you say you guys want to have a conference call, that can still constitute as a public meeting if it has not been publicized. Someone, I'm, I'm pretty sure nobody's gonna, you know, um, say anything against that. But as, as you know, as a, per, a public entity, uh, we gotta follow the rules. So. I understand that. Okay. I understand that. But, I, but like I said, I think Marcus will be able to assist with a lot of this. And then as you're getting, um, for instance, the the, um, the curb, the you know, the supposedly. The city messed up this gentleman's curb or whatever. Um, I don't know that that's something that the CRC really needs to address. Yeah. That really does need to be directed to the appropriate. Well, you person. see, the thing was, it wasn't something I, I looked at the CRC as addressing. What I was looking at was 
he reached out to me as, as being under commission, and I pointed him in the right direction to contacts in the city to discuss his problem. There was nothing I said, I'm going to solve this or I'm going to do this for you. No, I'm going to point you in the right direction and let you deal with them uh, on a personal level, and that way you can get it resolved. I'm not saying the city's going to pay for this. I'm not saying they're not. What I'm saying is I don't know, but what I'm doing as part of the commission is pointing you to the proper people to discuss your issue. And I think that's the purpose of this commission. We're not here to, to say that blankly we're going to resolve these issues or we're going to force the fire department to hire more people or we're going to do this with the police department. No, what I'm saying is we're going to point you in the direction of the people who do handle these things and find out if there is something they can do. And you're going to hear it from them, not from me, because that's something I don't want you to say, well, he said, because I'm not saying that. I'm saying the only thing you can say he said was he said this is the person that's in charge of this department. You need to reach out to them and discuss your issue. It's, it's not it's not truly a, a, a purpose of this commission, I think, to have resolution for a lot of issues, but to provide clarity and direction for somebody that has a problem to tell them where to go for, for resolution to their problem. You know, not like saying, well, the HRC or CRC is demanding this be done. No, we're not. We're just saying these are the people you need to talk to. Now, if you guys have a problem communicating with each other, maybe we can act as mediators in that discussion. But other than that, we're not here to we're not here to be uh, a be all end all repairman service. Okay, I, I guess I, I I misunderstood what why you brought it up. I brought it up today because we were yeah, talking about communication with each other within the commission. And uh, usually when I have something like that, I would just hand it off to McKenzie or Kelly, and they would disseminate the email to people that, you know, this is what's going on. And then on the agenda, she would send out, it would give people time to, to, to understand what one of the issues is we plan on discussing. And if you have any ideas or any suggestions, we can bring it up at the meeting. But yeah, no, I'm not. In that case, yeah, like I said, Marcus will be able to assist with that. And then if it's a discussion that you think you guys need to have, you can just put it on the agenda. For right. The schedule. Right. But like you said, we have nobody in that position right now. I mean. Um, well, next week you will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. That's good to know. Uh, is there anything else? Do we have any updates from the Sandusky's famed and fabled fire department today? Uh, no updates, uh, other than uh, we've hired a, our first uh, female in 30-some years. Saw that. So, um, And then we're still in that process. We had a couple other guys to put in the resignation and go on to other departments, and we're going through the hiring process right now. So that's about all the updates I have. Had a, <coughs> excuse me. At a previous meeting, Dr. Cade had brought up um, a potential Juneteenth celebration. This is prior to COVID derailing everything. And I was just curious about um, what that was all about. Was that her own? She brought it to the committee. So I was just curious about any information about that. Yeah, I believe in moving forward so when things open back up you know if yeah we're not yeah. galveston texas but it is a right. national holiday now no, so. most definitely and uh maybe you could back me up on this but i i think tondra and the rec department are putting okay. something together for next year okay. so um yeah I, I think she's kind of the the point okay. man woman on that well, on didn't that the rec also. department recently have a meeting and discuss that very issue uh, about future I know, I know the year before COVID, the Red Department did have a Juneteenth mm -hmm. um, event. So, um, as you mentioned, um, COVID kind of came in. They were they were doing some planning, and then COVID kind of messed it up. But, but that is something that you know, the Red Department, um, that would go to the Red Department. That is something that I know that Tondra has an interest in, and, and we'll make sure that you know, the city um, honors that. Um, 
Okay. They had, they had a small small something this year at the, well, at the they, pier. I went to Battery Park. I was a little a thing at Battery, Battery Park. But uh, I know the rec department did have a small get together at the pier because I was there in that day. Right. Yeah. And see, that's a, that's another thing about like you were saying is that we don't need to have disjointed celebrations. Mm-hmm. That we can merge things a little bit better. And like Naomi said, uh, funnel it through the rec department for coordination. That way we wouldn't have a group here, a group here, and a group here all in the same day, same time, and you're splitting up the city. Well, they were very close. You could have made it a larger, you know, downtown celebration. Seems well, we were talking about that, and, and then the Battery Park area mm-hmm. would have been a perfect place for the merged, merged yep. meetings. It would have been contained, easy to cover for the fire and police, uh, and uh, actually easily accessible from within the city. Everybody knows where Battery Park is. Everybody knows it's easy to get down there. And there was plenty of parking. And, and I don't think it's a bad idea if you, want to, if you guys want to coordinate and get with the right department and you know, make some suggestions and ideas yeah. um, as to you know, some of these celebrations. And I do um, know that this most recent Juneteenth celebration, it became um, a, a national holiday within a day. And then it became a state of Ohio um, state holiday within a number of hours after it became a national holiday. So it was kind of a last minute thing that it became a national holiday and then a state holiday and you know government employees had a day off. Um, I, I know so it, it was a little challenging for us at the Veterans Home because we had uh, like 7 p.m. that evening prior to Juneteenth when everybody left work regular time, everybody was expected to come back to work 8 a.m. the next morning. And then it became a holiday, but we we're twenty-four-seven operations, so we're trying to figure out okay, how are we gonna do this when <laughs> yeah, that's people are showing up for their jobs, yeah. but if we find out, you know, off hours that the next day is gonna be holiday. So I think some of the things, um, you know, because it became a national holiday and a state holiday, I think that kind of added to um, having some type of celebration or acknowledgement to it. Um, but yeah, the, the suggestions and ideas for these different holidays, I think, is a great idea for the CRC to make some recommendations to the rec department on some of these things. Yeah, uh, what I'll do, uh, Mr. Chairman, is I, I'll um, I'll get in touch with Jason just so we can, you know, have that line of communication just so they can kind of keep us up to date uh, and have a meeting prior to you know them getting into some. Uh, just into some real decision making and planning for that event next year. Because so. next year, Juneteenth is a Sunday, mm-hmm. which is probably going to end up being Monday Monday holiday. Monday holiday. So it'll be a three day weekend that weekend, hmm. and uh, so it'll be the 18th, 19th, 20th. So it's that's something that we could probably look at trying to coordinate with the rec department to have some type of weekend celebration type of thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, and now from our revered police department, Officer Hill. I have nothing new. I was just uh, over the cover and <laughs> brought back any information that he brought back. <laughs> Didn't you guys have some new hires down there recently or promotions um, or retirements <clears throat> even? Um, since. Probably the end of June, we have hired four. Um, one of the people we hired, um, he ended up resigning prior to starting um, for another agency, um, more towards Cleveland, which I think was closer to home for him. Um, but we have, uh, one of them is gonna be getting off of FTO here in the next couple of weeks. Um, and then the other two, um, probably a couple months still. I noticed the officers smile a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> That's a tribute to the chief. Yes. Because he was making instructions that they need to more be more accessible to the community, and nothing makes you more accessible than a smile. That is very true. Walking around uh, neighborhoods. Yep, just um, stopping in the store, gas yeah. station. They're, they're friendly. Yes. You know, that's something that, that uh, we've long needed in town. Uh, just the fact that they'll stop and turn around and say hi to somebody uh, or how you doing or, you know, 
script or something like that. Yes, and we're continuing to try to find different ways to uh, uh, get our officers more engaged with the community and vice versa. Um, at the end of the day, that's the only way that we can do anything is if we do have a good relationship with the community. Um, because a lot of times that's whose help we need or um, that is who is having the issue that we need to fix. Okay. Is there any other new business anyone would love to discuss? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, we don't have to meet a whole hour. Uh, but is there any old business someone would like to bring up? Now we're at this next meeting thing is December 8th. Um, I think uh, we're in September now. And between now and December 8th, I imagine there's going to be a lot of things happening in town with the new hires and the plans you have and things like that. Um, I, I Personally, I would like to have uh, an update, if it possible, from you, Jonathan, is how the September Ice Cream Socials worked and what kind of input you got from the community at the Ice Cream Socials. So if sometime between now and our next meeting you could do that, I would appreciate it. Blake, I'm looking forward to the information you're going to disseminate. And um, and that, so if anybody has any other new business they'd like to bring up or something they'd like to discuss, then the floor is open. Uh, real quick, uh, us in the fire department, we are having Sub-Zero with the Hero tomorrow night at Toff's Dairy. Um, from 5 to 7 p.m. So if you guys could pass that on. Let me put that so down. Bring the kids out or you guys are welcome. From 5 to 7? That's five. tomorrow night? Yes, it is. I would if I wasn't at school. But. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're in school? Yes, sir. What, what, what are you studying here? Uh, electricity, so electrical work. Cool. Okay. And that's Sub Zero at Sub Zero Tops. with the Hero. Sub Zero with the Hero. And, and that's the ninth title Sub Zero with the Hero. Just another special announcement. Cool, right? NFL ahead. football kicks off tomorrow, FYI. <laughs> <laughs> what? Thank God. <laughs> Forgot what about does? It. Uh, football. The season, uh, season kicks off officially tomorrow. Tomorrow night. Wait a minute. Oh, which football season are you talking about? NFL. <laughs> oh, not yet. NFL is not not with uh, Dallas and Tampa Bay. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh. I'm not a Cowboys fan, and Tampa Bay, I think, stole it last year. <laughs> but now the 12th is open yeah. today. Yeah. <laughs> that will be a good day, and uh, I will would like to be, as a matter of fact, Justin will be there. Mm -hmm. So um, I would like to be in Kansas City for the game, but I can't. <laughs> So that's a good thing now. It's the real football season. Very good. Tomorrow's exhibition. <laughs> I know we talked a lot in our last meeting about events occurring on the pier and making sure that those seemed welcoming to everyone in the city. I mean, I think we had a good turnout for, yeah, I, especially I, I, the movies with children. It looked like yeah. there were a lot of residents that went down there. Mm -hmm. um, concerts, I think the turnout went well, but I didn't know if you had any com anyone had any comments. Yes, on I it. do. Uh, <laughs> I really do. I, uh, I, I don't know if there was enough time to develop a more diverse musical mm -hmm. uh, choice or selection. Uh, and I understand what that takes. And hopefully next year. Right that they'll have more time between now and then to start booking acts and seeing what we're going to do. But I do think there needs to be more diverse musical hmm. musical talent down there for that. Yeah. And uh, uh, the movies I thought were good. Mm -hmm. um, the, the turnout was excellent. 
especially the concerts, but yeah. it was the same group of people that go to the concerts all the time anyway because it was the same type of music. Right. That's something to keep in mind. Not necessarily. I, I know that I was at the football game, and, and there were a lot of people behind me talking about how good the uh, Motown cover band was. Or I, I, did, I heard them from afar because I did not make it down to the beer, but I could hear them from... Um, Shorehouse, and they sounded really good from Shorehouse. So I know <laughs> other people had said no, that they were really yeah. good. Yeah, I, th- I thought there was a diverse yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. types of uh, events and, and music and things like that. Um, but we also got to have to remember we were coming out of um, COVID. COVID yeah, mm-hmm. so, it's difficult. Yeah. Right, right. As you mentioned, as, as we're going moving forward, um, there'll be a lot more diversity. But I, I, I thought they did a great job of, of right. keeping things diverse. Yeah, yeah and there's, um, and, a, and you know, and to your point, I mean, uh, you know, we always look to grow in every and anything that we do, right? Um, but, uh, you know, that being said, uh, believe it or not, I think there's very few people who actually knew that those that, that concert series was going on. And, in fact, I had heard that after the Michael Jackson tribute that took place. So, you know, that being said, I believe once we really, you know, uh, now that the – anticipation and the excitement is, is kind of built up a little bit. We can take that momentum going right into next year. And then obviously with more time and more marketing, I think we can, you know, grow that, that whole, uh, that entire concert series and, um, you know, and that crowd, you know, look e- even have a greater, well, um, this year was a growing, diversity, growing so. experience. Yeah. And it is, I think there's a lot to build off of. Uh, I had a few conversations with a, with a few different folks down there, I mean, and they they all seem really excited and you know and looking forward to to what next year might bring. And on a side note, I think it's just awesome that uh, you know uh, touching on the good time and bringing the good time back. My gosh, is 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 that an asset? Is it a is it's such a compliment to what's taking place down there? I mean, and just to see people flowing from you know, from the from the grass area or up near the stage to the good time and just back, mm-hmm. it's it's an awesome thing to see. So, I couldn't be uh, I couldn't be any more excited for you know for what's to come. Well, one complaint I do have, and maybe like I said, it's COVID and all that, but um, I know different entities were putting on different concerts. It was hard to find one location to see what was going on the pier at any given time. And I know people know that I go down there a lot, so they were asking me, well, when is this or when is that? And you either have to go see, like, is Lang Trust one, you know, the library is putting that out on their social media. The city would put, you know, something out on this page, but you, there was no, never one place where you could see the, the, the complete list of concerts. Well, um, you know, I think, I don't know who um, controls the venue down I, there. I thought that was like on the rec. The rec calendar. Okay. Yeah. And I know the rec calendar, but that rec calendar is kind of hard to read, read. interpret. <laughs> um, unless you're like at a desktop or something. Well, but I'm saying it's like we can social media out. wise, like each each concert series had their own calendar, but like you know the Friday night concert series and then the Thursday night, you'd have to look at two different two or three different places. Yeah. It'd be nice to have one place where you're like this is what happened. You know, I think that's night. something that that Matt Westerhold at the register can can help coordinate because he can put those things together in ads in the register, public service announcement. This is what's occurring for the month of July or the month of June at the pier. Mm -hmm. So-and-so presented by the Lang Trust, da-da-da-da, presented by so-and-so. He can do that. You can pick and choose, and you have that in the paper there. Might help their circulation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and... and yeah, there is a, a calendar of events that, that is a community service that goes into the newspaper for free. But if there's like a specialized ad um, saying, you know, provided by the Lane Trust Fund or whatever, that, that's, that's a paid, that has to be a paid ad. It's not, it has to be. It's typically a paid ad. So we got to remember when he says that there's a community service calendar, it's typically, you know, um, the, the standard font with different types of events going uh-huh. on, that there's no charge for that. Okay, but, but if we that... want to draw attention to it and we want to highlight it, then that's an ad that's a paid for ad. Yeah, well, you know, the thing about it is, is uh, like you said, it, it, it's uh, a community service page or whatever. It, it's just a thing of, you know, they can put in their peer calendar for the month. 
that doesn't have to be paid, and, and regular font will be fine, you know. Well, yeah. Um, I mean, I mean that's not something that's gonna violate any um, any ordinances or codes to have the register place that in there. The agenda for the peer that's that's not illegal. Nope, never said it was. <laughs> and, and, and someone who is somewhat tech savvy, it was hard to find what was happening on which night. You, know, you really had to go either to their Facebook page or yeah. their Facebook page and actually search it out. Uh, and it'd just be better if the city was like, you know. One spot. Here's the Jackson Street Pier. This is what's happening. Right. You know. Right. So that's yeah. I, I, think I think that's, that's, a, a, good that's a great suggestion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Well, if there's nothing else, Anybody has any other ideas, suggestions, announcements? I don't want to steal your time, folks, but uh, I'm looking for a motion for adjournment. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Meeting adjourned. Thank you for attending. Put some ice on my knee. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going over there. You got to go over there, Yeah, I got to go over there. Okay. Now this sub-zero with the heat.